can I retail the original story? No, it's, it's a wholesale story, really. Um, I, I can't retail it just because my cost of Can I retell the story of how I fell into the role of Cain? You should open your mouth a little bit wider when you speak. Uh, can I retell the story of how I fell into the role of Cain? Yes, I could retell it, actually. It'd be very simple. I would just go over the incidents involved, the timeline. The, <laughs> the truth be told was that I, I was lounging in the park one day, and the hand of God himself came down from the heavens and Cherry Pepsi. Cherry Pepsi is pretty good. Coke Zero, also good. Well, who's my competition, really? Uh, I was I was working at West Wind uh, Studios, but uh, yeah, you know, Diet Sunkist, pretty tasty, sweet, fruity, <laughs> just like me, sweet and fruity. Um, because my father uh, actually played Kane uh, before me, and his father played Kane before him. His father before him played Kane. His father before him was a plumber, but his father before him uh, actually played Kane as well. So it's. it's I, I like the fact that every time you think that you've sort of seen his end or seen uh, a situation that's going to, you know, finally befuddle him, the writers have found a very creative way to, you know, turn it around to make you realize that he's always, you know, he's been in charge the whole time. I think that's a lot of a lot of fun. There, there's a constantly evolving backstory to the character because every time you find out that there's been a plan all along, well, you have to go back and tell that story, and. Uh, determine what that, you know, what the new backstory is. So it's a constantly changing, evolving backstory. I think that's a lot of fun. Has, yeah, has Kane's end game changed since Tiberian Dawn? Well, uh, I, I'm just an actor. So in terms of what his, his end game is from moment to moment, uh, that is left in the hands of very capable writers and, and developers and uh, people who are much, much smarter than I am. I just say the words, man. <laughs> and wear the clothes. I wear the clothes too. Wear the clothes and say the words. Wear the clothes, say the words, say your lines, hit your marks, and uh, don't bump in, into any furniture. That's me. I spend a lot of time outdoors. I do a lot of camping. I do a lot of uh, kayaking. Um, I have a sailboat out in California and I go uh, uh, sailing as often as possible. Um, I, <laughs> live a, I live a pretty good life. Just lately, although I've been a little bit more busy, as CNC starts to uh, wind down a little bit, so, suddenly uh, I'm, I've got a surplus of producers who are uh, coming out of the woodwork and saying, you know, we remember this character from our, our time as video game players, and now that we're making movies, uh, we remembered you, and, and we're hoping to bring you on as a bad guy. So I've got a couple of offers from just from uh, from fans turned to directors, fans turned producers. So that could be um, I could be looking at that in the future. Uh, don't let anybody tell you any differently. Um, world fame kicks ass. Yeah, so, so all those complainers out there who are saying uh, love of a vast amount of adoring fans is no fun, bollocks. It kicks ass. When I'm at the conventions and I'm walking through the, uh, through the halls and I hear just in the background, hey Kane, nice ass. That's, that's really very, very flattering. Uh, you know, look, I've, in all seriousness, I've always said and will continue to say that, that, that uh, Command & Conquer fans are the most loyal. The, the, the core fans have been very uh, vocal in support and criticism about what works and what doesn't work. So I, I think we really have just the, the greatest fan base ever. I've always been really, really flattered and humbled and f quite frankly surprised uh, by the sheer number and enthusiasm of, of the Command & Conquer fans out there.